Hi guys and girls, welcome back to my channel. I do hope you're doing well. As you can see, it is Moments with Mummy G for the month of September. Nine of these so far this year. Oh, Who would have thought? Yes, yes. Who would have thought? So guys, I'm not going to river it because we've had a lot in this month. Oh god. Oh. So uh, I hope you're strapped in. Let's get in for this month's Moments with Mummy G. Alright. What did or does... So what did mum do for work back in the day? Uh, mum was construction, weren't you? Yeah, but when I left school, I went into shop work. And then when I was, just before I was 30, when I met Shan's dad, uh, I went into construction as a chain girl. And I worked my way up to lab technician. So what is a chain girl? Because that's what I've never been able to find the definition. It's where of. you go out with an engineer and you have this big long like a measurement thing and you stand on these uh, structures and they're away with the field of light and they can see your moles and you just have to rock it like that and they go Ugh! and then you stand still and they get a reading or whatever <laughs> they shout at you yeah no no it's not horrible i mean but uh bags dada could read the field of light but i could never read it because i have to, i can't look through one eye so, do train girls still exist? Oh, I've got no idea. That was back in the days, you was. So I've never heard of a train girl. All oh, right. So okay. I, I was on a big uh, structure one day, and my my dad was there in the crane, and he says to the man, who's very quiet, "You look after her, because if you don't, oh yes, okay," he said, "We'll be fine. We'll be fine." Thank you. Nothing to ask, just sending love from me and my papa. Oh, thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Uh, how did you cope with pre-menopause and menopause? HRT, any advice, pretty please? Uh, well, I think when it come, I'll, we was living in a mobile home. There was a two, a couple of uh, things where I would ask Shannon's dad something and I would think he didn't hear me and I would launch something. <laughs> One day the workman went past the, go the mobile home and all of a sudden I've asked something and he's ignored me and I've just gone bang and I've smacked, I've got my hand in a fist and I've punched the mirror and it all broken <laughs> and they was going oh and one day I uh, he said something and I launched an ashtray went p straight past his head <laughs> a big crystal ashtray but then I could be like that viewers and then another day I could be Aah! But uh, I'll just let it run its course. I think with mine, I think I was all done and dusty by about 45. Because I had Shan quite late. And I think after that, it was all done and dusted. And uh, I woke up one day and I had a full beard. So I thought, oh, I must be in the change, you know. <laughs> Did you have, what's HRT? That's hormone replacement therapy. I think for you, that's a patch, isn't it? But my doctor offered me that. But I heard that you can get breast cancer. So all them years, I just said, Thank you, I'll ride the storm. Mm. But I've come out the other side. So if someone said your top tips... Was, so if someone was thinking they was coming into it, what advice would you give? Can you get a test to see if you're coming into uh, it? it? Your body changes. It's like you start sweating and you start... If you're in the queue of, say, a shop and you start feeling yourself go really red oh. and, and you start sweating profusely and... All things like that. In the even in the winter, that's when you know that. From my experience, don't take me gospel. That's what happened in the night time. You will get hot sweats and cold, and like you think you got the flu, you know. Okay. But I don't think, and also with uh, with the ladies' things, you have to make sure that you you don't have them for two years. If you if you go nearly two years and you have a show of a period. You've got to go back to the square one again. Oh, I didn't yeah. know that. That's when a lot of people have children in their change. You know, they think, oh, oh you know, it's just whatever. And then they'll be old nine months' time. That's how my uncle was born. Oh. Yeah. So could be a lot of late babies. I think maybe if you went to Holland and Barrett, they could, if you're suffering, give you some things to help you along. But I didn't have any of that. Hi, Mama G and Shannon. I was just wondering, would you do a makeover on your mum's house? We've actually been talking about this, guys, because I've got surplus wrap, uh, not wrapping paper, wallpaper, paint, 
I'm just going to give it to mum and let her be creative, but me and Dan are always on hand. But do you have any ideas of anything you want to do? Uh, no, I just mix and match. <laughs> we'll, we'll see what it's like when it's empty, Shan. Because yeah. it's only my bedroom, really, and this one. We've got to get this one emptied to see if there's any sort of, like, damage with the carpet or anything. And then bring the little bed in, put that one out there. Because I know the back rooms and kitchens will be all right. But because we got, like, a, in the bathroom and toilet views, it might be old-fashioned to you. It's called Tile on a Roll. I get up there with the wipes and I'll clean it all off when Shan used to have the candles. <laughs> but Dan was saying he's glued a bit back for me and he said we can do that in white. So maybe we might put a different colour on that. Who knows? Because me and Shannon did the kitchen ourselves a few years ago, didn't we, Luke? Yeah, they saw the um, yeah. thing. Yeah. It was all good. Are you sad Shannon's moving out as you'll really miss her? Because I'm not going for uh, Well, I, I'm beginning to get used to it, viewers, because she's going longer and longer every time. You it's know, and there's... there's <laughs> There's more and more going, and I'm in a, when I'm in the room at night on my own, I'm going, hello, 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 hello. <laughs> and there's nothing in here, like, you know, like you're in the Alps. But, uh, yeah, I will miss her, but it's I'm getting used to it now because she's going longer and longer with Dan. Well, there will be a little camera in here so we can converse, and I still filter her through the doorbell. <laughs> yeah, but I, also I've got to uh, keep the internet on because Shane's going to show me how to use her old camera to do FaceTime. Or I've seen a little camera where you can get a little two-way screen, so I might look into that as well. Oh, right. I can just set it up on the TV. But when I speak to her friend, I'm like, hello. She goes, mum, you put it down. I get a bit confused for yourself. Love you both. Monkey, thank you. Thank you. How do you ignore the scares and worries about having your first child? Any tips? Uh, well, I don't think I'd have one, to be honest. It just didn't happen, and in the end, I just thought, oh, well. And then when I found out I was, after 16 years, I was blessed. I saw the video of giving birth and I said to Baz, oh, you know, and we all go to the hospital and you sit down and they rub your back and all this, you know, antenatal classes. <laughs> but, of course, my, my daughter, she was uh, she was very wanted, but she come after a long time. And lo and behold, I had to have a C-section. She was upside down and back to front. So Her little happy. feet were down here. And when she come out, she had a big wad of hair like Don King. <laughs> and I used to get really bad heartburn, and that's what they said. <laughs> and when she come out, she was left-handed, because when I was pregnant, I fell out the car. And when she come out, she had like a little uh, AK-47 on a birthmark on her left hand. And now she's left-handed. She's very brainy. So, uh... I wouldn't yeah. recommend falling out of a car pregnant. No, no, it's, it was going slow. It was going slow. <laughs> I got out too quick. I said to Baz, oh, good. Up we get. Anyway. Hi, Mummy G and Shannon. I'm in the same boat to say with Mummy G, but my liver and heart have got pressure on them. I do everything they ask me to do. I don't overeat. I don't drink or smoke, but only have a drink if I've got a family do. But it makes me feel not good as I'm seen as, as I'm seen not a good person. I feel scared if I get stressed out of my heart or liver. What would you say is a... So someone who also has health problems like yourself. Yeah, yeah. Don't overeat, doesn't smoke or drink. Occasionally drink at family do, but then they feel bad for having that. What would your advice be? If I had the no viewers what that word was, I'd just carry on, which I'm carrying on now. Because the young lady at the doctor, she said to me when she told me, you look surprised. I said, well, blow me down with a feather. <laughs> oh, she said, you don't. I said, no. She said, well, no, you've had a heart attack. We don't know whether it's mild or strong, when or when. Have they told you at the hospital anything to change your lifestyle? I said no. So I'm just carrying on with my lifestyle views. I don't need too many Pringles now unless they're on offer. <laughs> but uh, I do partake in a, a little tete a and uh, I must admit, hold my hands up. Last night I went to the shop and I got uh, a couple of bottles and I've got some lemon juice and I'm going to try and make myself a sidecar when Shane's away. Oh, the cocktail. Yes. <laughs> yes. But I just think, you know... Live your life the way you want to do it, you know. If people think you're being whatever, you can just say, well, I've had a health scare. Or if you don't want many people to know, just say, I'm just watching my health as I get older, maybe, you know. I think you still have to live life, though, Yeah, you? yeah, yeah. I say to my friends, they say to me, are you going to... I say, no, no, no. 
because I, I could just change and then cross where I live and then boom, I could be embedded in the tarmac. <laughs> what, what, what a lovely way to think of it. Yes, I'd get a bill from the council viewers. Another one kind of linked to the thing, but someone says, I'm worried about my mood swings. I get very low and snappy and my doctor thinks I could be in the pre-menopause. However, I just oh, want oh, to know yeah. the signs. That is pre-menopause before you get it. Yeah, so that's right, like right, yeah. Signs before your period, I would guess. No, be, no, premenopausal. That's you've got the uh, the bits coming, the hot sweats and that, but it's like before the blowout, you know. So it's like, so say before I have my period, I get like really agitated and that. It's yeah, kind of like yeah, that, but before yeah, you start yeah, having your period, yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, well, there was a thing when I was younger. Maybe my mum. It, it was called. St John's Waltz, as I say, don't quote me on that. And I think ladies in them days used to have it and it used to ease all the symptoms. Not take them away, but ease them a bit, maybe. But as I say, mm. if you went to John Barrett's, uh, no, what's it called, Shane? Holland and Barrett. Holland and Barrett, <laughs> yeah. Sorry about that, viewers. And uh, ask them and just say, you know, if you feel happy telling people. And they might be able to prescribe you something. But it comes to all us women, viewers. I was so sad when I had mine because I wanted more children. So when you have it, that's like no more babies then? That's right. That's the final nail in the coffin. That's mm. that's why I want to be a surrogate, but Shannon said I can't. But you might be a bit old to carry a baby, Mum. No, but I've still got my things in there, even though they're not working, Shannon. It could just be like a little papoose, wouldn't it? I'll carry them in there and, you know? But hey-ho. See, I think I'd be looking forward to it to not have Mother Nature every month. Yeah, and it's quite costly now, isn't it? Tell me about it. Yeah, yeah. Jesus, don't have to pay for all the... Well, I, I think if I come back again, viewers, I'm going to come back as a man or I'm going to come back as a butterfly because I haven't travelled or anything so I can just get me wings and I can go to all these nice places and think, oh, I'm going there now. This is where Shannon went. Well, you've travelled on FaceTime with Dada with me to these countries. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. see the rooms and that. Oh, God, yeah, yeah. Just not physically, you don't have a passport, so you actually no, can't leave it's the country. No, it's very expensive, you're a hundred pound. You actually can't leave the country right now. No, well, well I could, you know, if I saw, you know. <laughs> if you know a friend of a friend viewer, just let me know. Just wanted to say, you're an amazing person who gives fantastic advice, always love you loads. Oh, That's thank you, good. but don't take me as gospels out, viewers. Hi, Mama G, Shannon and Dan, hope you're all okay. I wanted to ask Mama G, I'm having problems with my daughter's husband. He seems to try and control her all the time. And I've oh noticed God. lots of things what he's doing as he's trying to isolate her from family and friends. Oh. Rings her whenever she's out, demanding to know where she is and what she's doing. She doesn't even have her own space and tells her she can't even decorate her own living room without it being the paper he picks. I'm dying to tell him and have it out with him, but I'm afraid I might lose my daughter if I have a go at him. Oh. I need some advice, Mama G, desperate as he's controlling her life. Well, what would you do? I, I, I would, as you said, have it out, but the problem is, would your daughter, as you say, cut you off, or would he make her choose between you and him? But that, to me, viewer, is coerciveness. It's, uh, as I say, when I was young... Maybe a little bit with a person, but when you're young, you think you're in love, don't you, when you're 20-odd, you know? But the person mine was more controlling because I had money left to me, and it was more, oh, well, you've got the money. Can you lend me this? I'm not going to work no more. I'm not going to do this. I want, I want. And me, like a mug, I was like, yes. My dad said, you will get bled dry. You, And, you know, when you're young, you don't, you don't believe that, but... It happened, and I got him to sign something, and lo and behold, he went into, uh, he's gone to AWOL. So uh, I've got no chance of getting that back, maybe. But it's very hard, because I know, I mean, Dan, he's been living here with us. And sometimes I think, oh, would it be? But I'm sure if I uh, did FaceTime with Shannon, and she's like, because Shannon's very open with me and that. If I did FaceTime with Shannon and she's like, Hello, Mum. Right, I've got to go now, Mum. I would say, What's going on, Shannon? And then I would take it for a few weeks or, or maybe a few days. And if it st was still the same, I think I would have to 
have a chat with Dad, and we would have to. But I'm sure that you know Danny is a good man. I, I hope, I hope he is. I hope he is for his sake. I'm not a uh, no, so yeah, I my but maybe that lady's daughter is a bit timid. You know, maybe is it your daughter timid lady? And she's, she's a bully. Yeah, and he's she he's frightened to say anything in case he gets aggressive or just keep an eye and make sure your daughter don't get no marks. But see, I wouldn't like that if you're out and they're constantly. No, calling. no, it's like they're not trusting you, isn't it? Like or otherwise, your space. daughter must be a beautiful young lady. And he's frightened that somebody's gonna. Oh, like he's punching. Yeah. Like he's punching above. But then throat. again, it, you know, if, if he felt like that, your daughter could say, "Look, I'm with you. I'll go out with my friends. I'll come home to you. You're my husband." You know, it's a bit awkward, isn't it? But uh, keep them peeled. As sure Taylor would I mean, say, keep them peeled. The whole decorating thing. I don't. I think like that again is just another form of what Controlling. he wants. Yeah, yeah. Like no compromise. Oh, I hope she gets on all right for you. Let's let Shannon yeah, know. Keep us, uh, updated. Yeah. And then the one to uh, end on, it says, Hi, my fave girls. Hope you're well. Yes, thank you. Mama G, how can I convince someone very close to me that is heartbroken how to move on? Her partner has left her twice before, and now for the third time, she's just waiting around now for him to come back again. Oh, no. How can I get through to her? Mama G, if you're watching Tom King on Emmerdale... This is what she is dealing with. Manipulation, calculating, yeah, yeah. and has her convinced she's in the wrong. But she is so quiet and not in the wrong at all. He just wants to go off and be on his merry way again. And I'm very mad as he blames her for leaving. I hope he's gone, oh, so a friend. I yeah, hope yeah. He's gone for good this yeah. time, but doubt it. Any advice is most appreciated and lots of love to you. It's again, it's a coerciveness thing, viewer. What's this Tom King on Emmerdale? Yeah, I'm he's a, he, he's Belle's husband and he's he's making that she going mad. He's oh. doing these things. I'll, I'll get right into it, viewer. But uh, by the way, that's what I was saying. When you think you know someone, it's not till further down the line things could start, you know, progressing or whatever. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, But I would say to her... He's done it once. You can accept that. He's done it twice. That's a little bit pushing the line. If he's done it the third time, hey ho. You know, me, me and Shane's dad ain't together, but we're the best of mates. I think it's sad when they say like she's waiting for him to come yeah, back. Again. I yeah, yeah. What well, does she does not think she's worthy of someone else or being on her own? Maybe. Like, he wants to go off in his merry way, and then yeah. she thinks that he's going to, like, come back again. So he's, he might be giving her a false hopes over you. But for me, I think once I'm done with a partner, I'm done. I've never yeah, well, got back in contact with exes or anything. I'm done. Well, that's you, Shane. You're very cutthroat, isn't it? Yeah, but I think you know? that's Yes, point. yes, I understand that. Because but... you're just redoing a chapter that's clearly not worked. So why bother? Yeah, yeah, but you're very blunt, aren't you? You know? There was a thing when I was growing up. Everyone, when they split up with their partners, would have, like one last hurrah for old time's sake oh. now if you've ended with someone i couldn't think yeah. of anything worse than jumping in the sack with them no no because you could end up more than what you uh, was going for wouldn't it but i just think i'm very like okay you've had your run-ins it's good it hasn't worked out have a good life and goodbye yeah close that chapter and be done with it i'm not no, but what would you mind. do then if that if that occurred with me and dad and we didn't have no contact and you didn't see your dad well, I didn't see Dad for five years when I didn't speak to him. No, I know, but I'm saying, but now you're older and more mature, what would have happened, like, if it had blown out and you'd have thought when you was, like, younger, oh, I'm not going to see Dad for a while? I've always been very independent. Yeah, I know, yeah, yeah. As bad as it sounds, <clears throat> if you went off, like, on benders for weeks on end, I probably would have been very fine on my own. I didn't do that for you, so I was here as a mum. No, but I'm no, saying, like, yeah. if Dad wasn't here and you wasn't here, I was yeah. actually quite self-sufficient as a yeah, kid. Yeah, you could cook, cook and all that, yeah, yeah. Take myself to school. I'd probably just go yeah. to the laundrette to do my clothes with the old lady that we know. Yeah, yeah. But I don't oh, know, that th that's the way. Me. Try and try and convince her he's not going to change over you. Just but sort of try not to tell her that the things that you want to tell her, you've got, got to be sort of... A little bit more diplomatic, and it, and and see where she's coming from. 
I mean, I but I people, wish I will. Yeah, I know people say, oh, a leopard can change its spots. Yeah, but think, not after three times. No, I just think there's no. has to come a lot of time when you draw that line and think, I yeah, have more respect yeah. for myself to allow this. But, hey-ho, that, that didn't go with me and Shannon's dad. There was nothing, there was no other people involved. We just grew apart, you know? Maybe if there was another lady on her dad's part, me and him would have been kaboosh. You know, because I his PA. yeah, I know, but I I would <laughs> I wouldn't have because it's very strange thinking if another lady come on the scene and split us up. I don't think I would have been like Mrs. Nice Guy. You know, I would have had to approach it, and it could have got a little bit, you know. But hey ho, we're good friends now. I just think everything happens for a reason. Yeah, but I think yeah. A leopard don't change. No, spots, no, maybe. no. And I don't like it. It's almost like, as you say, it's like false hope. Like he's gone off yeah. on his way. Then he comes back maybe for his bread and cake. And then he goes off again. And then he comes back. You're just kind of like banging a carrot to the woman. And also, he might be thinking, oh, she's uh, soft. I can go back and I can sow my oats or whatever they're going to do and come off and go back. And it's like a ping pong, a bit of elastic, isn't it? Yeah. I would let that elastic go once, but I wouldn't let that, maybe twice, but I definitely wouldn't let it go three times. I'd cut that elastic and the ping pong ball would be gone. Three, four times. Yeah, it's too much. I'd probably say go for like a coffee, so it's like a chilled place. It's not going to get too What, and have a chat with him? Yeah, um, no, with your friend. Yeah, yeah. Like, and just so yeah. that it's coming from a good place. She'll either listen to you or uh, you'll break. But Hopefully if you've been friends, friends for a long time, keep Shane informed. Yeah. yeah, a bit of a sad one this month. Is. <laughs> well, that's your last one, mother. No, I'm, I, I, no, I'm going to have to go and make myself a psycho now to get over this. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. But yes, guys, that is Moments with Mama G for September. <sighs> Done. As I say, next month, I would say that mum might be a bit more tired. I'm not licking my lip fuse. I've got a cold sore. Oh, you need yeah. to, I need to put some Survirax on it. No, no, yeah. yes. But uh, if you did enjoy this video, you know what to do. Hit that thumbs up and subscribe down below. And so if you want to get involved in these videos, yeah, drop me an question. email. Yeah, drop me an email on the mailbox below or follow me over on Instagram, all things Shannon X. And Any I do questions, polls. we don't mind. But as I say, what I tell you, it's not gospel. I'm yeah, not I'm a DJ. No. therapist or anything no, like but that. But I do just... say that. But I try and help you and we have a laugh. <laughs> So guys, take care, stay safe as always, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye! Bye!